computer. And we don't use that word beef here. Sorry. I'm trying to fill up my low ticket. And I've been playing around with Yelena and Benny on how to do this. And I'd like your feedback on the structure. So I'm hosting a webinar tomorrow night. And that has been every call to action across everything that I've done. I sent an email. I've done reels. I've done stories. I did an IG live to promote it. I posted in the school group in, I just launched it open registration yesterday, midday. And I have 250 people registered as of right now. Now, Benny gave me some comfort in saying it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. So as long as I'm trying to hit numbers, then I can expect some sort of conversion rate. Um, so webinar is going to be tomorrow night and I'm doing a one-time offer only live for those people who sign up. Like I'll go through the entire webinar, plug the low ticket, and then do Q and a while people are signing up on that one-time offer pricing. Yelena said to send out a like video sales follow-up email kind of, and say, Guys, if you missed the webinar, at least watch this video. You only have 24 hours to access founding member pricing, which is $10 higher than the initial webinar pricing. And then from there, enrollment is just that. And then I'm going to increase the price again. So enrollment is founding member. It's going to be valid for 30 days, Elena, should, I should do, and then increase again. So that's kind of the flow. Sorry, that was rambly. Why are you calling okay. And your question? My question is, does that flow feel effective? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the thing you need to know or should know is that webinars typically have a 30% show rate. So if you have 300 people saying they're going to come, you could expect 100. Okay. Also, I wouldn't actually begin getting into the actual webinar until five minutes past. So I spend the first, I maybe show, I would personally show up like a minute or two late because everyone else is going to. And then you spend the next three minutes just kind of, you know, fanning the flames. Hey, what's up, Nur? How's it going? Hey, Fiona. Hey, Eugene. Christina, what's up? Good to see you again. MJ, what up? Tori, amazing you're here. Guys, I'm so excited. We're going to start in just a few minutes. Make sure you, you know, you turn your cameras on. If you have any questions, post them in the Q&A box. Um, we'll get to them at the end. So pumped. As we go through this, I'm going to be interacting with you guys. I want you guys to be posting in the chat. Make sure chat is enabled. Make sure your settings is set to uh, all hosts and panelists or whatever the setting is. Just tell them like all like the house rules, like repeat those house rules like three or four times because more people are going to be showing up all the time. Um, and if you want to be even more hype, what I do is when I show up a couple minutes late intentionally, I also have my camera off. I will turn on my mic and I will play like an opening song, like hype song. Wow. So, so people hear like this intro and if they're like, well, there's like a, like a rock concert, you know? Afro beats will be the intro hype music. Something. Yeah, something. Yeah. And yeah. you could also, next, next level, you could also have the Afro beats on while you have a a uh, countdown timer. No. Yeah. So you could like you could go to like five minute countdown timer or two minute countdown timer or whatever, three minute countdown timer, and have the music on. Afro beats and have this on the screen, full screen, and nobody can see you because your camera's off. You are elite. So there's like, ooch, 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 and everyone's like partying and it's a good time. Okay, great. Thank you. So those are a couple like, you know, a couple little ninja tricks, little ninja hacks. Another How ninja we get hack. That clock on there? What's that? How do we get that clock on there? YouTube, three minute timer. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, those those were some a couple ninja hacks. 
that make a big difference for sure. Because I've done them without doing that, done it with doing that. And that does make a difference. Another big difference maker is letting people know, hey guys, if you stay to the end, I'm also giving everyone away this this um, goodie bag. Inside the goodie bag, you're gonna get boom, 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 which is not available anywhere else. And everyone gets it. And then like if, if since you have slides on your final slide, you'd be like, oh, by the way, if you wait to the end, here's the link to get the goodie bag. And it just goes to a Google Drive folder. Okay. And inside that goodie bag is just some freebies. And inside the freebie, there's obviously call to action. You know the deal. Okay. Um, and then let me ask, what is the title of your webinar? How to detox successfully every time. So that. Okay. I don't have a second half of a sentence. So that. Okay. So that you avoid unpleasant detox symptoms. Yes. Such as. Nausea, fatigue. Thank you. Oh. Now I can eliminate nausea and fatigue by attending your webinar. I know that. I understand. Unless you, you could be, until you tell me that, I don't know. Mm. Right. How would I know? Because I'm a beginner after all. I'm obviously a beginner. That's why I need to attend your webinar. And as a beginner, I don't know things. I don't okay. know pretty much anything. So you have to, such as, so that, be very specific with this stuff. Does it have to be that whole chain? So how to detox successfully every time so that you avoid negative detox symptoms, such as blank and blank, that whole yeah, thing. Yeah, you got three different slides. First slide, how to detox successfully every time. Next slide, so that, blah, 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 da, da, da. So that, next slide, blah, 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 Like, Okay. Yeah, use the use your slides to your advantage here. Okay. Also, pro tip, no more than, are you using slides? Yeah. Okay. No more than three lines of text per slide. Ideally size 18 plus font, 20 plus font. Pictures on slides are awesome as well. And just white background, black font works really well. Don't need to do anything too funky. Mm, and then how many slides do you got? It's not even created yet. Oh, when is it? Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Get to work. I know. That's today. <laughs> okay, dang. Well, I'll send you over a couple of my webinars if you want to just take a look at them, see what, see what I've done. Okay. Yelena, right. don't be anxious for me. I do this. <laughs> cool. Yeah, you'll crush. You'll do great. Mm, the other the other massive tip I have uh, two mass two last massive tips and then I'll I'll let you be on your way. In fact, I'll send you a document for this. Use as many trial closes as you can. Do you know what a trial close is? No. I thought we talked about this at the retreat. Maybe not. I was talking to Benny about this actually. Trial closes are when you say little things that get people to nod their head and, and, and agree with you. And you can use these throughout the entire webinar. Let me post the document here in the chat for you. So as you go through your webinar, you're talking, you're going to say something amazing. And then you say, does that make sense? I was going to say, yeah. You say, does that sound good? I was going to say, yeah. You can say, you can say, you can say, that's exciting, isn't it? I was going to say, yeah. And you say something like, can you imagine? I was like, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's cool, right? Yeah, seems cool, doesn't it? Yeah. So you just use these throughout your whole webinar as often as you can. And then what that does is it just gets people to subconsciously agree with you the whole time. By the end, they're like, I agree with everything this woman said. If they agree with everything you say. Then when you finally present your offer, they're going to be like, hey, well, I have to sign up. So that's one tip. Well, another tip. Uh, I guess the final tip I'll give you is the more storytelling you can do, the better. Because facts tell, but stories sell. My highest converting webinars were just 
stories. My lowest converting webinars were arguably my most helpful in that I gave so many facts and step-by-step -step actions for people to take that by the end, most people didn't sign up. And when I asked them why, they said, because you've already given me so much to do now. I've already gotten so much from this webinar. I'm going to go implement. I'll come back and sign up later. Mm. Which, yeah, as you know, people don't actually implement. And if they do, they're going to mess it up. So on the webinars that converted the highest, I actually just told the most amount of stories. And at the end, when people signed up, we asked them, why do you sign up? They said, because you showed me that it's possible. That's the difference. They sign up when they know what's possible and they know what's possible when you share stories. So, yeah, those are, those are some massive little, massive, massive little nuggets for you. Thank you so much. Cool. I think that's it. Any other questions? No, that's over and above what I expected. Thanks. Cool. Yeah, well, uh, I'll send you a slide of one of my webinars too right now. I'll send you an old webinar because this one did well. But did, just so you know, this was created in like, I don't know, a few years ago. So don't don't judge me too hard. And don't think yours needs to be like this. Also, I just gave you a ton of little tips and tricks which aren't even necessarily in this webinar because this is so long ago, but there it is. At least the flow worked really well. And this webinar converted like crazy. Uh, especially the pitch. The pitch is insane. If you fast forward to, if you fast forward, oh my God, this pitch, I went all out on this pitch. If you fast forward to slide, Okay, if you fast forward to slide 291, that's how you should start your pitch. 291 onwards. Cool. Magic. That that shit that like I spent thousands of dollars to learn this stuff and hundreds of hours of time like perfecting everything. So slides 291 onwards, proven, guaranteed to convert. Okay. Great. Especially if you add in all those other little gems. Let me know how this webinar does. I want to. I want to hear. Uh, I want to hear how it goes. I'm gonna do every single thing you said and let you know every cool. single thing. Well, you got time uh, as your enemy right now, so get to it. Yes, thank you. Uh, oh well, I guess I'll say one final thing, Tori. The easiest way for me to get into flow state and be and feel like i'm on adderall or something even though i'm completely sober is to have a deadline for a webinar that i haven't completed yet so i've had so many times where it's like i have the webinar at 5 p.m and it's like 4 30 and i'm just like <sighs> and i'm just like creating the whole freaking webinar in like half an hour because i like i need to make everything really good it's unbelievable how much work you can get done in just 30 minutes when you get a webinar coming at five and like your income depends on it like it's it's good stuff so who needs adderall when you got deadlines thank you i'm gonna leave now good okay bye oh. <laughs> all right Yes, Christina. I think Elena is leaving. She came to flex her new view. All right. Okay. What up, Adam? Nur? Hey. Jeffrey? Looking stoic. Fiona, hope your fingers are doing well. All right. If you guys have any questions, feel free to... Uh, Ask away. I have, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so I have rented a houseboat for a week um, and there, it's very small. And I'm going to use this as an opportunity to film 
my course on how to cook instead of what to cook. And I am just looking for some um, suggestions of how to go about making it epic. Hmm. I do, you're asking someone who doesn't cook and you're asking someone who doesn't film himself cooking. You're asking someone who only makes courses using slides. So I don't know if I'm the best person to ask. All I would say is that what it, whenever you're teaching someone something, always start with why. Explain why you're teaching it. The amount of times my brain gets so freaking bored from listening to someone, is that they don't explain the why first. They're just like, okay, cool. So here's how to put the butter on the pan. And I'm like, but why? Why do we need butter on the pan? Instead, you should be like, hey, if you're like me and you hate when stuff sticks to the pan and you got to like scrape it off afterwards and it never seems to come off and you end up wrecking your tools, wrecking your pan, well, I've got the solution for you. It's called coconut oil. You put a little bit of coconut on the pan and it'll prevent all the sticking from ever happening. Here's how to do it. So you start with the why and then you get into the how. And you know, to go above and beyond there, you could explain like why this is important and why they're screwed if they don't do it. So me talking about like you're you know, going to ruin your pots and pans by scraping the thing kind of shows that you're screwed without doing this. So now all of a sudden I care. So make me care. That's my suggestion for you, Fiona. Make me care. Make me give a shit. Cool. It's super cool because I was going to ask you, well, how do I make it into a story? Because you'd already mentioned earlier that um, it's boring to just present information, right? And People don't even remember that. But if you present a story, then they're going to want to reach out to you for help. But you yeah, said it the, way better than that. The, but story just can now, come in, the story can come into how you learned this, if, if, if necessary. You could say, you know, my grandpa taught me this back when I was a kid. And ever since, and I've used it all the time. And I see people not doing this, and it's, it's causing chaos for them. So shout out to my grandpa. Okay. That is really good. Cool. Thanks, Ted. Cheers. Uh, Eugene asked a question. Is this also presented in entrepreneurs videos or slides? No, I don't think so. This is some top secret stuff. All right. Christina? Ted, just a, a quick newbie question here because I know everyone's already far off than uh, where I am but I'm just getting so I think I showed I shared with you my account on Instagram you took a look at it yes yeah what's your uh do you have any advice or what's your yeah it's it's still very now it's still very new so you only think you'll, I only saw three posts I recommend having nine posts as like a yeah. starting point that way like has a full grid so yeah. just get to nine posts and that way you'll be able to see like how it all actually looks. Three posts is hard to get a kind of yeah. vibe. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out like grasping, like creating content. Like how am I going to like sell this? Like I'm still trying to wrap my brain around. Like I feel like when I create stuff, I'm just recreating the same stuff over and over again. Yeah, well, you just said two completely different things. You said, I want to figure out how to create content. I want to know yeah. how to sell this. Completely different things. So what are you asking? I guess I'm just want a little bit of guidance as to um, what to create, what to even put on my Instagram. Okay. So... I would write a list on a Google Doc. Like we did. Like you should be doing almost every day. Yeah. Adding to this list on a Google Doc. Yeah. And that list is called top 10 problems people have with yeah. this process. Yeah. With this goal. Top 10 desires people have. Top 10 tips and tricks that I have to make everything easier for them. So yeah. now you have three lists of top 10s. And then you just write a little blurb on each problem each desire each tip or trick and you put that on your instagram since you're doing written content for everyone else i'd suggest yeah. video content yeah and I, I i played around with the reel too so i did make a i was able to make a reel i so i used 
someone else's, I don't know if you've seen it, but I used, um, I just like reposted a reel and I kind of create it my way. So I was just kind of, so I did that. I don't know if that's. There's I'm a just kind billion of ways to create content. The one I gave you is one of the simplest that you could start with. Okay. I would do that for your first 30 pieces of content. And after that, if you want to experiment with other stuff, go for it. Yeah. Okay. And just, there's no other special trick in just starting from zero. You just, just create and just hopefully people find you. I've already done it three times. Just do it 27 more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You've already done it. Yeah. The only other like step up for you, if you want to take that, you want to go from bunny hill to like the green hill and the yeah. snowboard run, if you will. Yeah. Is to rather than having just written content, yeah. you could just get like a video of the sky or like trees going like this or whatever, like just get some footage, which you can either film yourself or get online yeah. for free. Post the text on top of that video. Yeah add some soft background music and then voice yourself over reading what's on the screen. So if on the screen, it's like, the screen might say something like, the text on the screen might say something like, most parents think their kids should either go to public school, private school, or be homeschooled. But what yeah. if I told you there's another way called the hybrid method? Yeah. The hybrid method okay. consists of putting your kids in public school just for the fun stuff like gym and art class, whatever, but then you can teach them the rest at home. Boom, that's it, done. Then you just okay. voice over that. Okay, yeah, that sounds, I can do that. Cool. Okay, awesome. Cheers. Thanks, Ted. You're welcome. That last example, would you have to have a call to action? Not necessarily. I mean, you can in the caption, yeah. You don't need to say it. You can if you want. Yeah, some I like to put call to actions in long form content. I don't feel like I have enough time slash I don't feel like I've built up enough rapport with the person in a short form to have a call to action. So I like call to actions in my long form. Short form content to me is like me staying top of mind. People think about me every day because I'm popping up. And then every now and then I drop like a long form, you know, five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute, 20 minute, half an hour video or whatever. And they've already like, they've known me from the short form. So that way they, they're willing to invest in the long form. And by the end of the long form, I have through the long form. When I make my pitch, they're much more likely to take me up on that. Because the pitch is usually just like, download my free course or book a free call, whatever, soft pitch. No hard pitches in your... Social that media. is super helpful. I never thought of that, that the, the short videos are just to keep you uh, top of mind. So thank sure. you for that. Well, we've had a few clients sign up recently and our closers like asked them like, hey, like how come, how come you want to sign up right now? And they're like, I've been seeing Ted everywhere. He's everywhere on social media. It's because I'm staying top of mind with the content. So, but that's that. Plus I had the long form content, which actually, you know, delivered deep value with them which then consists of the call to actions. So they actually book the call and then boom, they sign up. So Ted, when you say stay on top of mind, you're just, you just want to be relevant. I want them to, what, I want them to think of me every single day. I want you to think of me every okay. single day. Got you, got you. Okay. As a kid, I used to wonder, I used to think like, do people ever talk about me or think about me when I'm not around? And I was always like so doubtful of that. I'm like people probably don't ever think about me or talk about me. But now, since I'm into like marketing and sales and this business, I realize that, of course, I want people's mind every freaking day. And I want to be because that's how we make sales. So yeah. and that's just from pumping out content. It's not because I'm like inherently special or anything. It's just I pump out so much content that I'm just I'm just uh, I'm just advertising in front of them every day. Uh, Jeffrey, you got a question? Hey, hey Ted, how's it going? Um First off, I have been following you since way back in the early YouTube minimalism days. And uh, I'm even friends with a couple of your friends, Connor and Brittany. So I almost connected with you a couple of times, but didn't didn't line up. But great to see how far and how how amazing everything is for you nowadays. Really awesome to see that. 
Yes. So I have a follow-up question on that. Uh, but well, I guess I guess really the main thing I wanted to ask you is I've been building my school and I've been adding a lot of um, courses and uh, a lot of trying to build the community. It's been free so far. And the business model so far I've been thinking is a monthly subscription. And I watched a webinar of yours talking about how, you know, the difference between a 499 course or whatever is only just asking for more between a 599, that whole thing you, you mentioned. Mm. And right now I'm, I have a lot of, you know, doubts of how much it's worth and so on. And I'm like, how do I price a membership versus say a coaching versus a course? And I was wondering what your thoughts were around subscription pricing versus, you know, static one-offs or coaching things. I, I, I just kind of lost. I don't know where to start with that. Gotcha. Yeah, it can be tricky, man. It can be tricky because there's no like, there's no like official pricing guide on the internet for stuff. So I recommend creating an internal pricing guide. Just have your own pricing guide. So for some people, for some people, they just love selling a bunch of low ticket stuff. And they're just like, we want to be known for having a bunch of low ticket stuff. Other people, they're just like, we only want to sell high ticket. We don't want anything low ticket. For me, I like, I I was brought into this business world. And I was taught the value ladder, right? The value ladder is like, you should have something free. You should have something for like seven bucks. You should have something for like 47 bucks. You should have something 97 and like up, 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 up. Um, and I've since now customized that a bit. So now I've really simplified it. For me, I just, I just have three price points. I have a $0 price point. I have a super low ticket monthly recurring price point, which is 49 bucks a month. And then we have a, a high ticket price point, which is more than five grand. <clears throat> so, so uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's good to hear. So you're, you have found for your monthly one, at least as far as you're concerned, that about fifty dollars is is a nice number that people aren't really too swayed away from. No one's ever said, "Hey, I can't afford fifty bucks a month." Hmm. Plus, we give them a free trial. Oh, and which, how do you? I'm, which made I, don't, I don't want to take too much. No, that made a big I don't want to take too much of your time, but is it complicated to set up a free trial? Do you have to monitor each person or? No, 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 no. You literally go on Stripe and you type in, I want to, you type in Stripe, create product, or you click create product. Then you click, uh, I have a video on this, but I'll just tell it to you. Create free, create product, put the price in 49 bucks a month. And then it's like, oh, do you want to offer a free trial? And you click that box and it's like, how long do you want your free trial to be? And you put seven days and it's done. Oh, that's, that's really good. I didn't know you could do that. I'll do that. Unbelievably that's simple. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, that. Sure. So anyways, just that framework, $0, $49, or even simpler, $0, $50, five grand plus. And then just, and just like whatever, you know, some things we only give to our super high ticket clients and other things we give to our low ticket clients. Uh, we give pretty much everything to our low ticket clients. Every, we give everything. We pretty much give everything to our low ticket clients that we give to our high ticket clients. The only difference is our high ticket clients get much more access to us, to me and the team privately. Mm -hmm. And then the low ticket people get all the same information, but um, the high ticket people get much more customized structure, much more access to us, much more personalized feedback, much more handholding for high ticket. Yep. Cool. Low Thank ticket, you. Low tickets very much DIY. And then the free stuff is uh every now and then I'll do like a QA like I'm doing right now with you guys in the free stuff. But the free stuff is mostly sharing, as I told Fiona, mostly sharing about like the why this is so important, why this works so well, what's actually involved, and then uh, like sharing wow stories, success stories. So the why, what, and wow. Mm -hmm. so free equals why what wow low ticket is basically everything except one-on-one -on -one help and then the high ticket is one-on-one -on -one help plus everything else hopefully you can visualize that 
Yeah, you might want to like write ex write down everything I just said into a document for yourself, and that way you can have like an official pricing guide for your company. Because it helps to think in these frameworks. Because I often think, oh, I want to create this thing. How do I deliver it? How do I sell it? And nine times out of ten, I'm like, oh, just, let's just give it to the low ticket people. They're already paying fifty bucks a month anyway. So it's why, what, how, then everything, then well, no, no, no. The, the free is the, the, free, the free is why, what, wow. Wow. What is that? Success stories. Oh, okay. And then the low ticket is the how, DIY how, right? Do it yourself how. And then the high ticket is done with you slash done for you how. Cool? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Very niche question. I love it. It's hard to get these answers anywhere else, man. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I, I'm really, it was so cool to see you also ramp it up when, because I, I was looking at school for some time now and I saw your activity level rise and now it, are, are, it's like you're you're working with school or what what's, you're just so ingrained in it. I don't know what's going on, but you're everywhere. It's awesome. A lot of people think I work at school or with school. I just, uh, yeah, I, I'm close with the team. I'm close with the team. I'm like the, I'm a super user. That's what they call me. A super user. <laughs> I have a, if nobody else has a question, I have a, just a random question. Do you see any, uh, any things that people do wrong when they're approaching how to build their online business? Is there any like things that you're like, I just see this all the time. It's a thing that everybody's doing. 100%. I've made so many videos on this. Mistakes newbies make. So many. One of the biggest ones is they think they need a website. It's hilarious because like pretty much every single person thinks they need a website. Another big mistake is people think they can't charge high ticket. They're like there's no way someone would pay me two grand. Meanwhile, I'm out here selling, you know, ten thousand dollar plus programs, despite having the same mindset just a few years ago. No one's going to pay me two grand. So it's just like this: it's all beginners, man. They all pretty much think the same way. Need a website? No one's going to pay me high ticket. Um, another one is like, if I put it on my website, people will just buy it. I don't actually need to promote. I had this, the same thing with me, man. I was a beginner. I thought the same thing. I was like, if I build an app, people will just download. It. I'm going to make all this money. And then the app developer kept nudging me, reminding me, he's like, dude, you have to actually promote it. And I was like, nah, people will just download it. And it didn't make much at all. So those are like three really big mistakes thinking that you don't need to promote. Another big one is like actually trying to sell on social media, using your content to like actually sell in the content. So like you make a video and then throughout the video, or at the end of the video, you're like, by the way, if you want my $100 course, you can get it here. Huge mistake. I use all social media now, not ever to sell. It's purely to build my email list purely to build the email list so what did it, what kind of call to actions do you use pretty much the same one every time if you want my free course or i don't, I don't even say free course because it sounds cheap i say if you want my course that helps you with xyz and you want to get it for free click the link in the description and that takes them to my school community what actually gets them to opt in first so i click their email and the next page is like hey if you want to access the course right away get in the school community Yeah. Uh, I can't. I can't review vids right now. I can't. I can't do uh, content review. But you can ask me any question you want. Hey Ted. Um, so I did. Uh, I did a video to pin at the top of my Instagram. Mm -hmm. Usually, you know, like uh, what I did is I took your format, the, uh, the brutal before, uh, the divine discovery, and the and the now wow. Cool. So it's kind of like kind of discussing like where I was, what I discovered. And where I am now in like a one minute format. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I just I put in like a bunch of old pictures of me, like where I was in the shit days. And then I put in uh, the good pictures and I'll show where I'm at. I'm active working out, this and that. Um, so that's, it's, it's probably, I think that's long enough, one minute going over everything, pin it right at the top. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you have to like, you guys have to learn to like vibe out and feel your own content. Like a musician would know if their song is good or not. Right. So like what I recommend is like you find a good video that you kind of want to replicate 
like maybe you found another similar video of someone who else has a before and after story or something and you watch it you're like wow that story was really really good then yeah. go look at your video and see how it compares if your video you feel is like just as good or better sweet if you feel like it's not as good then fix it make it try some different stuff and try to make it better solid solid and uh, so, so what I'm noticing is like it's way easier making YouTube videos, right? Because like all this other stuff like TikTok, IG, the short form content, it takes a lot of time to sit there on CapCut, especially when I'm just starting off to do it. Um, I know you always say that YouTube is like a, it's a search base. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, you know, it's sitting there. Ten years down the road, your video could have could be getting thousands of views. But whereas IG and the short format, it gets outdated very quick. So. Um, for someone that's starting out as a health coach, do you recommend kind of supplementing on each single um, platform or, you know, you always say like, um, get, uh, focus on one and just kill it at it? Or is it like... Uh, my, my, my ethos now is if it's worth posting anywhere, it's mm -hmm. worth posting everywhere. Yeah. Learn to repurpose content and distribute it everywhere. We're, we're living in an era now where the platform is almost irrelevant. I don't know where this video that I'm filming with you guys today is going to end up. I don't care. It's probably yeah. going to be on TikTok. It's probably going to be on Instagram. It's probably going to be on YouTube. It's probably going to be on Facebook. I don't really care. I just want it everywhere. I want to be omnipresent everywhere. I want to be on threads. I want to be on Twitter. I want to be on Reddit. I want to be on uh, freaking Quora. Like just put it everywhere. I don't care. And I'm not the one distributing it. I have someone in charge of distributing the content now. And I don't think in terms of like, oh, this is more complicated to edit than shorts or than long form content either because we just have an editor. So yeah. if you don't want to do something, just delegate it. And if you want to be everywhere, then don't think in terms of like specific platforms, just blast it everywhere. Definitely, definitely. And even, even if you like, even with your written stuff, like if you write a caption for an Instagram post, I know a lot of people do this. They spend like an hour writing a really good caption and then they post it and it's like, it's done. What a waste. You might as well take that caption, also put it into an email. Also make a school post. Also use it as a Facebook status update, right? Make, mm -hmm. make a shorter version of like a tweet or a thread, you know, but just blast yeah. it everywhere. And if, you, if you've never done that in the past, you can now go back and scroll through all your old Instagram captions and repurpose them for things. But again, if it's worth posting anywhere, it's worth posting everywhere. I've never had someone ever send me a DM or an email saying, hey, Ted, I think it's annoying that you post the same stuff on multiple platforms. In fact, of all the people that I follow, like all the top gurus, if you will, I rarely see them post the same thing on different platforms, but I know they are. But I just rarely see it because the algorithm doesn't show it to me like that. Like, the social media is set up in a way so that only 10% of your audience is actually going to see your stuff anyway. So if you have a thousand people on Instagram, only a hundred people are actually seeing your post. You know, if you have a thousand YouTube subscribers, only a hundred people are actually going to see that video. So you might as well post it everywhere because if they miss it on Instagram, they're going to catch it on Twitter. If they miss it on Twitter. They're going to catch it on YouTube. They're going to catch it on, you know, TikTok. just blast it everywhere. And, uh, Thanks for that, brother. And I have a question regarding the beta clients. So I did, I've been following everything on uh, um, content entrepreneurs and I got my first beta client, but it wasn't really applicable <clears throat> to what I'm doing, right? So yeah, I helped the lady like through a seven day juice fast. She lost like 15 pounds. What I'm catering <laughs> to is I got, I got the testimonial. Dude, it's, it's really good. Yeah, it's good. Huge win, yeah. Um, and what I'm, I'm kind of working on is like gut health coaching, right? So like I, 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 you know, heal my own gut and now that's what I want to help people do. I started the Facebook group, but the weird thing is like, they're all like raw vegans and my, all my friends are on there. So like they're, they don't need gut health, you know, um, they don't need assistance with gut, gut health problems. So where would I be able to kind of like, uh, you know, boil down people that do need help with gut health problems initially starting off, like, would you recommend joining random groups? and just you know, leaving posts on there and then messaging them. You got a beta client and you got a massive success. Yeah. That's incredible, dude. Yeah. That huge. alone is worth like you, you just created like a thousand dollar program right there easily. Hey, I can help you lose 15 pounds in seven days. Yeah. 
I don't know why you're starting to think of something else. Like you already have gold. If I could press a button right now and lose 15 pounds in seven days mm -hmm. and it cost me a thousand bucks to press the button, dude, no problem. Boom. It's insane. Yeah. Thanks. So you already have a system that works. Mm -hmm. And it's proven that a beta, it's proven that the people actually want it because you got a beta client. So that's the whole purpose of doing the beta client to prove that people actually want it, A, and prove that you can actually do it, B. And you've done both. So congrats. So do that again. Get some more clients, get some more beta, get some more uh, testimonials and create a program based on that. How to shed 15 pounds of toxicity in seven pounds so that you can heal your gut health, eliminate brain fog, uh, flatten your stomach feel more energetic, overcome insomnia, eliminate acne, whatever. Mm -hmm. So oh. I, I can still supplement, supplement that with like my gut health. You know, if like someone says something gut like, a, like Dude, gut health is just like a, a bonus. People want to drop 15 pounds in seven days. If they happen to have a healthier gut as a result, cool. Mm. You think people drink kombucha for the gut health, bro? They drink it for the caffeine, the energy, you know? And they, they justify it with the gut health thing. They go, like, oh, it's got these microbes. It's like, bro, you wouldn't be drinking that if you didn't have the caffeine, right? Yeah. Does that help the gut as well? Yeah, apparently. But do they really care? If you didn't have caffeine, they wouldn't be drinking it. So sell what sells, bro. And then give them what you think they want, which is gut health. But they truly do just want to drop 15 pounds in seven days. That's incredible. Yeah. The only reason I'm kind of confused is because uh, going through the courses, you know, like when we analyze like who you were before. So I, I be colitis with like raw foods and, and juicing. So I always thought like I'm going to help the niche that I would have been, you know. Cool. Colitis. Yeah. yeah. Colitis is a lot more, getting rid of colitis is a lot more attractive than saying gut health. Gut health is so vague. It's like saying aura. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, uh, or chakra. That's like saying chakra health. What is chakra health? <laughs> but if you specified and you're like, I'll help you get rid of your, you know, your, your um, heart palpitations, mm -hmm. much more specific. Yeah, it happens to be in the heart chakra, but it's like heart palpitations. Cool. Or if you say like, oh, I help you cleanse your, your yellow chakra, which I think is your belly, instead just say colitis. So boom, yeah, you could do that. But I think you're going to get much more, way more people wanting to drop 15 pounds in seven days and cure their colitis. The, 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 thing, the thing I realized yesterday, I have, I have insights regularly, but this is the big one I realized yesterday, is pretty much every single person in the world wants my offer. If you walk up to anyone in the street and tell them about my offer, the, most people want it. And so you need to create an offer that most people want and then niche down. So we have an offer that most people want, but we niche it down so we exclude a lot of people. And when I say offer people want, I, I really, really mean is we have an end result people really want. We have an end result that pretty much everyone on the planet wants. Like if you go up to a thousand people and you ask them, hey, do you want to make 10 grand a month? I'm pretty sure like 99% of them will say, yeah. Mm -hmm. So my end result is so attractive that it's so easy to then niche down and get people who I truly can work with. So I can't work with everyone. So same with you. You can go up to a thousand people and say, hey, do you want to drop 15 pounds in seven days? A thousand people, bro, of those thousand people, at least 500 are overweight. Of the 500 that are overweight, at least 450 would probably be down to you know, drop 15,000 in seven days. Wait, did I say half are overweight? That's a lie. It's probably like 80% are overweight. Mm -hmm. So a thousand people, you got 800 prospects, you niche it down, now you're at 700, you can actually help. Versus colitis, you go to a thousand people, hey, you want to cure your colitis? You might get a dozen. Yeah. So have an end result that everybody wants and then niche down. Don't okay. don't be niche with your end result. Yeah, like my like RMS right now is is like I help uh, 
I help people with gut health problems um, heal without medications or doctor's visits. Most people don't know they have gut health issues. Or how much people know how much deal with chronic gut disease? How much people know about gut disease? Yeah. And, how much people know that? I could have one right now, bro. I don't even know. Ashley, Ashley could have one. She doesn't even know. Yeah. Ashley could be having headaches every day and turns out it's like colitis or something, but she doesn't know. She's like, I got these headaches. Someone could have like chronic depression and they don't know they've got issues. Then they cure their gut issues. And all of a sudden the depression goes away. So it's like, we don't know that, like that. We don't, we're, we don't know that. But what we know for sure is that people are overweight. And if they lose weight on your program, they'll also get rid of their colitis. They'll also get rid of their headaches. They'll also get rid of their depression. Right? So don't be don't, don't be niche with your end result. Be be broad and be attractive to as many people as possible, and then niche down on your process. Okay, yeah, I'll because uh, it works, right? Seven days, seven days, fifteen pounds, and it's incredible. I can, I can work on that and growing it more. Sweet. Yeah, thank you, Ted. You're welcome. Cheers. I'll be right back. One sec. Well, cool. all right. I got time for maybe like two more questions. Ashley, you got to watch the play. Good to see you here. Got a it's question. Good to as, as soon as you popped in, Ashley, I was like, oh, she's got to watch the replay. Cool. Nur, you got got something for me? Yeah. So I have a goal of making three high ticket sales by the end of the month. And, you know, I'm focusing on the three C's, doing the content conversation clients. Recently, my reels haven't been doing too well for the past like two weeks, been posting consistently, you know, attending the content calls and getting good feedback. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm recording and editing reels a day. Um, and I just, I guess I want some suggestions or advice on what to best utilize my time with, you know, saying between now and the end of the month to make sure I can get as many people on calls as possible. Um, do you suggest like, you know, bumping up the uh, real post from one to three or just like going at it another way? Like I'm, I'm, I'm really just trying to figure out cause I'm setting aside a lot of time to just go hard on this for the next like two weeks. Cool. So what would you tell me, bro? If I told you, hey, Nair, I'm just getting into running. I'm new to running. You know, I used to play soccer a bit, so I knew I know how to run, but I'm just getting into running racing. My goal is to win three races within the next three months. What would you say to me? Better start running your ass off. Practice. Keep practicing. Keep running. But my goal is to win three races within the next three months. Then win one race a month, I guess is what I tell you. How do I know who's going to show up to the race? What if the Olympians show up? Yeah, I guess I don't know how I'd answer that. Um, so the reason you don't know how to answer that is because winning is out of my control. Right. I can't control if I win or not. I can control if I train, if I eat right, if I sleep right, if I do my stretches. I can control if I hit my pacing like in during the race, but I can't control who shows up. Right. And dude, this happened to me all the time in triathlon. I would show up to these races and I'm like, I'm going to win. And then like some former Olympian shows up and just crushes me. I'm like, damn, the next race I go to that Olympian's not there. And I win. take car champion. It's like, yeah. But in my head, I'm like, yeah, because that guy did that guy didn't show up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So winning races is like out of your control as an athlete. It's a horrible goal to have. Instead, the goal should be, I'm going to hit my training, I'm going to hit my nutrition, I'm going to hit my pacing, and if that happens to be good enough to win the race, awesome. So you got to run your own race. And so for you to say, my goal is to get three high ticket clients by the end of the month, bro, you can't, you can't like manipulate people into buying from you. Right? right. The same way. It's like, you can't be like going to get three dates on Tinder within the next month. How are you going to know these girls are going to be down to date you? 
you can't like you can't like force women to date you. Just you can't force people to buy from you. So if they end up dating you, they end up buying from you. Cool. Just do your best. And so for you to do your best, what does that look like? Well, what we found is, yeah, there's content and there's conversations and then you get the clients. So let's reverse engineer it. If you want the clients, what comes right before the clients? The conversations. What kind of conversations are there? There's DM combos, there's discovery combos, and there's strategy combos. Now, you know right now, if you were to have 30 to strategy calls with the next month, you'd probably get at least three clients, correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so you know how much easier it is to say, hey, I'm, my goal is to get 30 strategy calls versus I only get three clients. And so, okay, what leads to strategy calls? Discoveries. Discovery calls. Okay, so let's eliminate strategy calls. Say, my goal is to get 50 discovery calls booked. Now, do you think if you already got 50 discovery calls booked, you probably also send off at maybe 30 strategies after that? For sure, at least, yeah. Probably. Okay, so if we know 50 discoveries is possible, which leads to three strategies, which leads to three clients, let's reverse engineer one more time. How do we get those 50 discoveries? Well, you probably know that if you were to send, for example, a thousand DMs, you probably get 50 discoveries. So how do you send, uh, how do you get a thousand DMs sent? You send 33 a day. And boom, dude, 30 outbound 30 reach outs per month, or sorry, 30 reach outs per day is a thousand DMs a month. That's at least 50 discoveries. That's at least potentially 30 strategies, which is most likely going to get you those three clients. And if it doesn't, these people weren't meant to sign up anyway. But now your goal is so much more attainable. It's so much more in your control as opposed to out of your control. Now that definitely makes sense. Um... So in regards uh, to like, uh, 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 goal setting framework going forward, do not right. set goals that are out of your control. Instead, set goals that are action-based and 100% in your control. Just action-based goals, not result, result-based goals, action-based goals. If, if, if Adam comes to me and is like, hey, dude, I'm going to practice an hour a day on my drums. I already know what's going to happen. It's going to get way better. But if he comes to me, it's like, hey, my goal is to get into a band. I'd be like, dude, I can't really help you, bro. Like, good luck. Use the law of attraction to the best of your ability, you know, to make that happen. But if you want to get good enough to be in a band, you got to practice an hour a day at least. So make that the goal. Okay. No, that it definitely makes sense, dude. Um, it's a perspective switch. Big time. The um, so it sounds like I just need to post a whole lot um to get those conversations. Um, well, it depends what phase you're in, dude. You might be in a phase where your pipeline is pretty bare, in which case, yeah, you do need to post a lot and build up that pipeline. But eventually, you dude, you're gonna give yourself a year, and your pipeline is gonna be so full of potential buyers, so full of prospects that you don't even need to post content for a month and you'll still have like 50 grand sitting in your DMs. Just ba 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 You know? Because your pipeline's so full, so saturated. So, yeah, you may be at a phase right now where you do need to up the content, up with volume, and uh, build up that pipeline. Outside of... Um like posting reels, right? I, I know we have the document on contentpreneurs about how to get into these 30 conversations. I think it's 20 conversations per day. For you, so though, you for you, you need 33. Yeah, no, I'm going to, I'm going to try to go to, I mean, at least 40 to 50. I'm going to aim for 50 because I'm setting aside a lot of time. for. Just, just, just quick insight here. We're, we now have a new team goal. We're hitting 80 to hundred a day. Peace on Facebook, uh, across platforms Instagram, Facebook, school 80 to 100 reach outs a day. So, while the competition is doing 20, we're doing 5x that. Just some insight for you, not to say you should do that, but that's just insight. 
I, I personally uh-huh. liked insight. Like when I was in triathlon and I was like, I had a power meter on my bike that told me how much power I was putting out, like how hard I was working, how hard I could work. My power, watt, my power meter would usually say something like, uh, I would average maybe like, I don't know, 250 watts of power throughout the whole ride. And then I asked the pros at the end of the race, I'm like, dude, what, what did you average on your watts? And they're like, oh, 350. I was like, no wonder you're faster than me. You averaged 350 watts. I was averaging 250. You know, like they're just putting out more power and I, and I have the numbers now. So if you're wondering why is Ted making so many sales? It's like, dude, look at my numbers. Peace, Ash. And again, I'm not saying those numbers for you to hit, but I'm saying those numbers for you to have perspective. Or, or, uh, it does that which definitely does. It, it makes sense, right? It's, it's like tangible. What can I control? I can control putting out the content and having these conversations. Um, sure. Dope. Yeah, that's, that's what I needed. Thank you, bro. Cool, cheers. Peace, Adam. Uh, guys, I got time for one more question. It's going to be Jeffrey. It was more of a follow up on uh, NER's topic there. It was uh, when you go about reach outs, I know you have your team and everything and you're scaling that, but do you have any insight or any kind of ideas of how you managed to scale that yourself? I started reaching out and I got burnt out within like a week. I was trying to do a, so many Whoa. DMs and all this stuff. I just. Not- I got, I was like, I got to give up. It's not for you to do. Like, I love a clean and organized home. Love. Some people don't mind living with a mess. I love a clean and organized home. But I hate cleaning and organizing. Hate it. Can't do it. I'm like a deer in headlights. I also love when my stuff is nicely packed up, ready for a trip. I hate packing, despise it. I love when people pack for me. So what do I do? I just pay people, bro. I had a lady come over yesterday, paid her 180 bucks. She cleaned, organized the whole home. She even helped me pack. Like, yeah, just pay people, bro. I'm not doing that shit. I can't be a deer in headlights for very long before I start to, you know, steam comes out of my ears. So just pay people, bro. Pay people like they're a piece of software. Work with them like they're a piece of clay and love them like they're a homie. But just learn to delegate everything that you don't want to do, especially the shit that's essential for sales. If you know you need to do something to make money and yet you hate doing it, but you know that if you were to do it, you'd make money, then do the math and figure out how much can I justify paying this person and still make money? Because in my mind, if I'm, let's say, Let's say I don't have to do any work at all and everything is delegated, which pretty much is how it is now. Would I be willing to give away 50% of everything I make if I don't have to do any work at all? Of course, at least for me, I would. Of course, take 50%. Why do I care? I don't have to do any work except the stuff I want to do, which is what we're doing right now. So be willing, dish it out. Uh, How do you find those people uh to do that and then also i wanted to add before we end all this i'd love to give back to you because this has been very insightful i've i've been loving this call so if there's a way that we can give back to you i'd love to hear that too just somehow um but yeah if you if you knew how uh how we could go about finding these people to delegate to i'll tell you exactly how upwork.com make a job posting interview like crazy uh, giving back, dude. I don't know. Are, are you part of Contentpreneurs? Yes, I am. Yeah. Well, you're and you're 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 putting in your your fair share, forty seven or forty nine bucks, whatever we're charging per month. Uh oh, I'm not in the other. I'm in Contentpreneurship.com. Okay, so we have a we have a paid group which you get calls like this like four or five times a week. The Contentpreneurship.com group which you're in. It's totally sporadic. We rarely do calls like this. But if you want calls like this four or five times a week, yeah, we have a program called Contentpreneurs and it's 50 bucks a month. Cool. Awesome. And you get, and you get a seven-day trial to test out all the calls too before you commit. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. 
but yeah, upwork.com to find uh to find your people. That's it. Thanks for attending, y'all. I am out of here for now. Uh, check out this post, by the way. This post will be super helpful. This may be, in my opinion, one of the most helpful posts I've ever made. I wish somebody made this post. I've never seen anyone make this post before. I had to kind of reverse engineer, figure it out myself. Uh, only contentpreneurs can see it, but I'll share it with you guys now. I post a lot of stuff that only contentpreneurs can see, which means paid members only, but here, here it is. I'll leak it. So it's the effortless content extraction and distribution system. So we know that a steady stream of income is essential as a contentpreneur, but making the content is freaking hard and staying consistent is even harder. So the solution, stop making it. Instead, build a system that allows for effortless content extraction and distribution. How? Too many tripods, as you'll see in this picture right here. Too many tripods, boom, boom. I put the links right there for you. Two iPhones, put the link. Set them up in front of your laptop, as you saw in the picture. Offer to help people for free on Zoom like we're doing right now. Record yourself helping them. Airdrop the videos to your laptop once you're done. Upload the three video files to Google Drive folder. Send them to someone you find on Upwork. And for 15 to 20 bucks, they'll make something like this for you. They'll just crop, edit, chop, add AI, music, subtitles, everything. So that's how you can effortlessly create and distribute content. Well, that's how you create it, at least. To distribute it, you just hire a content distributor, pay them eight to 10 bucks per video. They'll upload it all for you. So again, here's the, here's the uh, layout. This is what's happening right now in this room as we speak. Boom, 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 done. So within one hour, you could probably generate at least five clips, which is like a week's worth of content short form content. And then you have the long form content as well, which is awesome for building rapport, nurturing, uploading, sending to people for like a long form video for those who pay. Ted, um, a couple of years ago, you offered a course. I, I can't remember exactly how it was, but you it was a video, like how to make a video. Yeah. And you, I think we paid $97 if we only, we only had to pay if we didn't show you the video and it had to be a certain length within the seven days. And I'm wondering right if you'll run a course like that again, because it was right phenomenal. Here. You can get it for free. I know, but when you said, if you don't have it done in seven days, I'm going to charge you a hundred dollars. It was so motivating. For oh me. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have time for that anymore these days, but maybe in the future, if I don't know. I'm, and if I do it again, I'm going to charge way more than 97 bucks, but it, I know it was amazing. I got great feedback from that. So for those of you who don't know, I said, hey guys, I got this course, it's called YouTube Mastery. Shows exactly how to make an epic video, walks you through everything day one, day two, day three, gives you actions every single day. And by the end, you submit your video. And if you submit it for review, I will refund the money. The success rate was huge. It was so good. The problem is it took a lot of my time to, because when you submitted the review video for review, I actually had to review it and get on a Zoom call with you and blah, blah, blah. So it was a lot of work. But in the future, if I do it again, Fiona, I'll probably charge like 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. And then you'll even have more motivation to get it done. But yeah, if you want to go through it, you can go through it. It's all right here. It's inside of Contempreneurs. I think you have to be level two. Yeah. You got to be level two to get it. But that requires five likes. I'm sure you can do it. Where's Fiona at? You're up there, aren't you, Fiona? Yeah, I'm probably up there. Level one. Oh, you remember a couple of weeks ago when you said that you'd do something like you'd give us a PayPal yeah. gift certificate or something? You're level um, four in contentpreneurship, but level one inside of contentpreneurs. Oh, okay. That's yeah, I gave up on that contest because I was like the leader at one point and then I logged in a couple hours later and I wasn't even on the board. I'm like, what happened there? Yeah, it must not have been for this group because here you only have two points total because three points to get to level five. But anyways, um, yeah, I think you were in another group. That's why you got so many freaking points. But this group, you need more points to get what you want to get, which is the tube school. It's 
capacity level two. Yeah, I, I'm a paid member, so. Yeah, yeah, you just got to get level level two. Yeah. Three likes away, you can do it. Cool. All right, gang. Well, that's it for now. Ciao for now. Much love. Adios. If you have any other questions, post it on school. And uh, we'll get right to it. Jeffrey, good to meet you, man. Sati, good to meet you, man. Nir, good to see you again. Keep making those vegan gains. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, man. And uh, Fiona, go heal, uh -huh. go heal your finger. Zuh. All right. Ciao, guys. Bye-bye. Awesome. Cheers. Nice to meet you. Cheers. Bye, Bye, -bye. Ted. Thanks so much. Later.